Hello and welcome. Hello. I'm the Restless Kaiser. I'm James Workshop. But together we are Modeling <laughs> for Advantage. <laughs> like pros, James. Oh, we've not got a knife. We certainly don't. We had a knife earlier. Hello. Uh, do you want to tell them what comes in the beautiful box? Okie dokie. This, what are we doing? We are doing Team Yankee. This is the USMC Desert Storm era. Ooh. Brand new starter army for Team Yankee. It's actually called the Marine Rifle Company. Now, I'm mentioning the Desert Storm thing because there's some red words on this box. Basically, the first print run of this set has got some Desert Storm themed extra bits in it, Ooh. tokens and things. We'll try and point them out as we go. So the box is likely to be available for a long time, but in this current form with these extra bits in, is temporarily... Bonus, Desert Storm themed cards and tokens. Cards included. and tokens, there you go. Hell yeah. All right, so, uh, James, just tell them what comes in it though. Fantastic, so you've got one formation command team. Boom. You've got 18 M249 teams. A lot of guys. Excellent. Six uh, Dragon Missile teams. Four M60 GPMG teams, four S more teams, which is more rockets, two M24 mortar teams, M224 mortar teams, five M60 patterns, two Hummers, which are the tow ones, yeah, um, four Lav 25s, which is like a mixed unit tank, more like a Macava kind of thing. Then you've got three M109 self propelled guns, two choppers. One complete A5 rule book, one American Star Here booklet, and three decal sheets, and then the bonus content. Mm -hmm. uh, the bonus content, it does actually separate it out. It does. Includes bonus Desert Storm, 20 unit cards, 21 tokens, and two objective markers. Which is a very nice. It so, is. I'm surprised they don't do that uh, like permanently. Retail cool. prices coming up on the screen now. Excellent. Boom. Um, so doing that permanently, I think things like that, they have... Um, Issues around keeping unit cards, particularly in stock. Uh, when I spoke to Pete to, uh, at Summer on our interview, one of the things they said that they were doing was, in future, card print runs are going to be one and done. Oh, okay. Because the, what happens is most of them sell on release. Mm. A few of them end up sort of lying in the back of shops and warehouses, <laughs> mm -hmm. kicking around for ages. You generally can't find the one you want, and there are several copies all over the world in corners. So now, it's like, if you want to get the unit card, because they do the books, Jump in. and they keep the books yeah, in print, yeah. if you want the unit cards, they're, they're purely um, accessories. Yeah, they're the accessories, aren't they? They're, yeah. they're fast references. Yeah. Right, let's crack it. There's, yes. your, there's your bonus features in there's, your rule book. There's your yeah? bonus features in the rule book. Okay. All right. As usual in these large boxes, it's just jammed. It is just jammed. It's just jammed. Do you want to give them a vehicle count? Because that's a good indication oh, yeah. of value, I think. So we've got five, six, seven, eight, twelve. Fourteen conventional vehicles and two choppers. Forty so sixteen vehicles. Sixteen vehicles. And then a lot of infantry. There's eighteen sorting. <laughs> eighteen. I mean you played World War Two mid war Soviets and you know about eighteen I've never had a, unit. I never had eighteen of anything. <laughs> no. Okay, cool. You get the team Yankee rule book. Um, Team Yankee, if you've not played it before, it's very much Flames of War, but a little bit simpler. Mm. It's more complicated in terms of you've got things like helicopters and missiles, but um, it's just it just feels a little bit sleeker. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure why that is. And it's a lot more lethal. Everything's got a higher mm. firepower number. So if you do penetrate, you're probably going to kill it. <laughs> uh, other things while we're talking about the paper, 3D cal sheets, that is because you get the... The Marines decal sheet mm. says Marines <laughs> all over it <laughs> repeatedly. I think this is the standard US Army decal okay. sheet, but I think the Army and the Marines, one use it paints white and one as black, Pass. but I'm not sure. Cool. Don't quote me on that, but these are black and they're like tank chevrons mm. and numbers. And then we get the Cobra decal sheet oh, so you can have yeah. your Cobra teeth. Oh, yeah. There you go. So the, the important aspect of this seems well, to be... Because oh, we were talking about the limited edition bits. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're standard, the limited edition bits, the cards. Now, I've already opened one of these and had a look. This is not just the cards for these units. Oh. This oh, seems yeah. to be the complete USMC so deck for this era. And I can tell you that, for example, they've got the Amtraks in here. Yeah. They're definitely not in this box. Um, and I think they I also had a Huey. Yeah. Was another card that was in here. They got an AV8 Harrier. Yeah. yeah. So we've got in here units in addition to the yeah. ones 
and we've got more than one HQ company. So if I find here, they've got the lav company. These are the different ways you could constitute it. Mm -hmm. A rifle company and a pattern company. Oh, okay. So you're sort of getting ahead on the book as well, I'm guessing. Is the book out for these yet? Uh, the book is already out. Cool. I think this is this this comes within the US Team Yankee book. Yeah, so you, you've got these, but it's given you the cards for I think all of the mm. Second Marine Division That's units nice. um, that you could potentially use. Right down to like I said, there was although I can't find it now. Oh, there you go, the yeah, US one unit, and it tells you elsewhere on the I think it's on the Rifle Company HQ. You can swap the. Um, labs mm -hmm. for Hueys or for the Amtrax. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not to one of a few, few different things. Uh, it's not on there. Was it on the rifle? Right? It says it's somewhere. Some. It says it's somewhere. Oh. Uh, oh. There's your next premium accessory that comes in the box. The next, pre the next premium accessory. So I think it's really good including the whole deck, mm. is I suppose what I'm saying. They're the plastic ones. Now you would potentially still have want some assets that were army assets, which mm. would be US Army. I'm not saying everything is here. So these are the standard token set that you get with these. These are your objectives, these are your mm. pin down foxholes. Acrylic tokens, velvet back. Velvet back to acrylic. Very premium product. Mm. Black. A crushed velvet, so, uh, mm. beautiful. So if you buy this in the first print run, and yes, there is a bit of FOMO associated with this. I'm not trying to upsell it or anything. Why not? But if you, if you want these Second Marine Division Desert Storm mm -hmm. tokens, go to modelingadvantage.com. <laughs> Go to modelingforadvantage.co.uk. Uh, we've still got, at the time of this video, we've still got four uh, of these um, original ones. They might be available for... I feel dirty now. Yeah. They might be available for a while. They, they, just, they just said, the box will be available, but this first print run has got these extra mm -hmm. bits. This is nice, but this is great. Yeah, yeah. Giving you the full deck. I suppose they can do it because it's, it's limited. This has just got all the USMC. It's not all the US stuff, no. which would be a deck like that. <laughs> yeah. um, this is just the stuff that the Marines have. I'm looking at the deck, having seen a few bits. There's probably like two or three kits that are in those cards that aren't in this box. That aren't in this, just yes. everything in but, this box. But proportions are going to be different, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah? So there's a few different types of labs here. Mm -hmm. We're at three, but you've only got two vehicles, I think. <laughs> um, but it means as you expand... And you expand the range, you can have a look at those other things. Yeah. So I think that's really good. Was there a paper booklet, James? I, in there? Yeah. There is. Start here. Yes. That's your, uh, yeah, your one times American start here. Booklet. Yes. Now, if you've not I'll seen that, here. you've seen I these seen in Flames of War, though, haven't they? Yeah. I think these are great. They are. I, I really do. It's, um, whoops. it's a bespoke instruction booklet. Just for the stuff that's in here. Yeah, a bit of history and a little bit of fluff and a little bit of Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and some ideas about how to expand the fuss, what this actually looks like. So if you play this in Team Yankee, this is actually a 74-point army. Nice. Um, yeah. Now, usually with this stuff, there will be more than one way you could assemble these mm -hmm. vehicles. If you're interested in that, and especially because they've given you cards for some of these other things, if you go to their website, Always when using their website, it's absolutely massive with content. You want to put in the product code. Mm. The product code is going to take you right to the thing you're looking for. <laughs> Whereas if you type in Bradley, you're going to find they've got a lot of a lot of content yeah, on their yeah. website as well as product. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot on hobbying. There's a lot on history. You put in the product code, it's going to get you to what you want. Yeah. You've barely been able to say a word yet, James. That's perfectly fine. Right, so we start with the, with the infantry. Mm -hmm. We get two sprues. Exactly. This is brand new. Now, the, the mech infantry came out already. There's like a Bradley oh. company, okay, cool. which we're going to look at down the line at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, but we only got them recently, and we want to do this one first. <laughs> but they may have already seen the, um, the mech one. And that's got like your dragon teams and most of your weapons on. There's this additional sprue for US Marines. And what's interesting here is I thought it would have extra weapons mm -hmm. on, but actually, as, as I'm looking at it, the Marine platoons are massive in terms yeah. of the rifle strength of them. 
And this brew is mostly rifles and machine guns. And I think that, yeah, there's a mortar on it as well. There's a mortar and a couple of missile launches, yeah. but there's so many models on there, it's mostly rifle. And the GPMGs are on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because that's, and that's reflecting the fact that you get 18 rifle and machine gun bases sure is. in this box. <laughs> and that's what it needs. Whereas the yeah. army is much more weapons heavy mm -hmm. per man. Um, so if we look at the rifle company in this box, you're going to get single base, the M16 rifle team. You sure are. <laughs> <laughs> which is going to make your rifle platoon, which has got so much information, it's spread over two cards. <laughs> they don't do the folding cards for this they one. Don't, no, like, but they're just saying, like, card. this is just more information for the other card. <laughs> nice. Um, so the rifle platoon you're going to take for nine points, mm -hmm. two of in here, is just the nine saw teams. But you can add to that um, uh, another two... Uh, sorry, you can replace two of them with with M60 teams. G -G, yeah. You can add two Dragon teams for a point each. You can add a 60 mil Moss for a point, and you can add a couple of small points for that. You can also switch out your transport for f one of the um, uh, AVPT se AVP7 for four Hueys. That's how big a transport <laughs> that is. Now, they do provide a card for the AVP7, yeah. but they don't actually provide them all. Now, I kind of understand they'd be big old lumps of resin. This is mm. a big vehicle, which I don't think they make in plastic. Um, but at least it, it, it gives you here. And I wouldn't want to put seven bases of infantry in one largely unarmoured yeah. vehicle yeah. in a game of Team Yankee, because yeah. they'll all die inside it. Oh, you said it was more lethal, this game, wasn't it? So that's It's a lot more lethal. That's yeah. one thing <laughs> yeah. that'll do all that work. Yeah. Um, so the marine rifle platoon, I mean, this has got to be. This is for people who want big units. Mm. If mm -hmm. you really want big units, because you get two of these rifle platoons. Mm. Um, what are they like? Oh, because we talked about this. We talked before off camera, <laughs> off camera, yeah. about how the M two four nine saw yeah. is basically a heckler and Koch version of the M sixty with short a shorter version. barrel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean. There's, uh, there's a lot of years of development in the middle there that made that possible, but they're, they're broadly similar weapons in different usage cases, right. which is where all the changes to the weapon get made. Yes. Change the usage case. So in this, yeah. the M60 base, down as a GPMG, it's in a sustained fire roll. Mm. So your standard uh, saw team has got a three and two halting moving rate of fire, mm -hmm. a bit like late war Germans. Mm. Whereas if your M60 is a sustained fire mode, it gets five dice oh, static. Yeah. Now, we've almost never done this. I think in our last game, I point out to you, the way that command and control works in Flames of War, mm -hmm. and I assume it's the same in Team Yankee, is you can leave elements behind. And they're not yeah. they're not we've disadvantaged. <laughs> they're not disadvantaged. Uh -huh. It's just that if they ever move, they have to either stay still mm -hmm. Or catch up with the rest of the unit. They mm -hmm. can't move. They can't operate independently. Yeah. But they can be dropped off. Right. Which, if it's a collection of embedded mortar teams, you don't have to worry about that too much. Yeah. Yeah. And in this base, you've got a sixty mil mortar team. You might want to leave mm -hmm. behind. And you've got these two, couple of GPMGs per platoon. Mm. But you've still got six, seven bases of riflemen to push forward with. Keep going. <laughs> so it, it, may, it, it makes a lot of sense. You oh, know? It, it also makes sense of the fact that you can only fit seven bases into an AAV as well. You leave that couple of bases behind, which you're going to do anyway, right. and then run away with the infantry. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. Um, so I think if you really like your infantry, you're going to like the Marines because you get a lot of bases. Yeah, it's like playing Soviets, but Americans. It's like playing Soviets, but Americans. <laughs> I'm just wondering about the 60 mil mortar. The 60 mil mortar does not fire a template. It fires as a weapon and it has the overhead fire rate. Oh, okay. And there's low firing. Right. And a 32 inch range. So it can shoot over intervening troops. I'm also not used to seeing anti tank 18. Anti tank 18 <laughs> and 17. And these are on infantry anti tank yeah. weapons. Yeah. Oh. So the, you, your dragon team's got an 18 with a firepower of three up. And it's got the guided and heat. So the guided rule means you don't pay the long range penalty Ooh. for shoot, for accuracy. But can't shoot infantry. Can't hit infantry unless there's can't hit infantry. bulletproof cover. Wow, yeah, okay. it can't hit infantry, it can hit what they're hiding in, yeah. is what that's basically saying. And the heat means you don't get affected by uh, range over 16 because you're not a kinetic energy round. Mm. 
but you do get affected by things like bazooka skirts, chubba mama, ERA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Cool. And in this system, you're not seeing some of that. I think the M6 has got ERA. We'll see. ERA normally gives you a really good defense number mm. on something that's otherwise terrible, but a lot of things are not affected by ERA. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, cool, cool, yeah. Uh, which is, I guess, what ERA does. Yes, it it's is. It's very good against chemical weapons. Uh -huh. Chemical penetrators. Chemical penetrators. Not chemical weapons. Not chemical weapons, not CBRL. All right. Um, but yeah, the Marines, fantastic. Mm -hmm. To give you an idea, like, that's how many bases you get. There's a <laughs> lot of guys here. That's for none of this. <laughs> that's for none of this. And you still get the vehicles in uh -huh. that lovely sort of army green. Mm. Although they provide a LAV company and an M60 company HQ card, the one you're going to need to use out of this box, unless you've got a load of other stuff mm. to add to it, is the rifle company. Um, and just to say that, that um, uh, there's, a, there's a force list in here of what you're going to build, but what your options are, as well as the HQ, which is a single stand of dudes, yeah. just a stand of uh -huh. dudes on their own, Two to three rifle platoons, what well, are you going to get two in here? I think you can build three, but you'd have to stick entirely mm. with rifles. Um, you can then take a Hummer platoon, either machine gun or anti-tank. Now, we're gonna, when we talk about the Hummers, you're going to find it's going to have to be the anti-tank because of the number of vehicles involved. Okay. You can also take the M60 platoon and the LAV platoon, all baked into the force. Oh, and what's good about that is it means your force morale, your core morale is really good. Because mm -hmm. most of the units here are baked in. Which means you're gonna great. Yeah, you're not yeah. gonna have that. Sometimes some force compositions are really tight and you struggle to hold on to formation yeah. morale because you're made up of supports. Gotcha, 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 right. gotcha. So gotcha. that was the rifle company, a pretty good HK. <laughs> Alright, so do you want to talk about the sprue and I'll find the unit car? It's massive. <laughs> it's massive. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a scale difference in the game, isn't there? Or are these just massive choppers? Uh, no, the problem uh, the problem up, so with the helicopters is they are the same scale. Oh. The planes are in a different scale. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. So, the, the, so this, that is in scale with these tanks. Helicopters are a lot bigger than you think. Okay. <laughs> That's a Cobra. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> AH1 Cobra. <laughs> um, but the planes are one. So this is a 1 100th model. Yeah. The planes are 1 144th, and you put them on the taller flight stand, <laughs> and that's supposed to give you a sense of perspective. If you're really high up, I'm sure yeah. it works. <laughs> yeah. But they do, when you get when you first get these in your hand, so this and is it's the. It's massive. The Cobra. It feels massive, yeah. but helicopters really are that oh, big. Okay. Yeah, this feels like a, a small tank for a war game, and this feels yeah, like a, basically appropriate for, <laughs> for a larger scale war game to me. Yeah, yeah. No, that is that is the size of the Cobra. Cool. So the Cobra as a kit, um, I haven't built the Cobra. If you think this is big, by the way, you should see the Apache or the Hind. Mm. The Hind is huge. Mm -hmm. um, it it could get one of these under one of its wings. Oh wow. Um, yeah. So the Cobra, I believe I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Do you know anything about the Cobra? Not in the slightest. I believe the Cobra is like under the bonnet, as it were, mm. is a Huey. Oh, okay. That's been up armoured, the engine's been pimped a little bit, mm. and some guns have been given. But this is the kind of the first attack helicopter. Mm. Or, or maybe not the very first, yeah. but it's a very early first. What I just told you could be completely <laughs> apocryphal. I came across that somewhere. I mean, it looks very different, but that's because it's not it's not got a crew compartment. But, you know, the actual mm. work, the helicopter working parts is basically an armoured Huey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that this, which is why it comes into service quite quick, because right. by now this is quite an old attack yeah, helicopter. So. And Apache is like, 50% longer than this. <laughs> that Apache is enormous. Amazing. Yeah. Um, this so is the oldest sprue in the box. That's my information. Okay. This apparently um, and it's been in well. service in a lot of arms. So you need to yeah. remember about Team Yankees, it's kind of a mid 90s type setting okay. rather than today. Mm. So one of the things about the USMC is it's always kind of had the army's cast offs. Mm. It's got some of it, some proprietary vehicles that it exclusively uses, but in terms of things like tanks and attack helicopters. Mm -hmm. So I think Harry of the Marines uniquely purchased for themselves, but they're often a bit less well equipped than the army. But uh, when you see with the H1 Cobra look, you get an improved tow missile for 21, 21. attack, or tow two uh -huh. for 23. Okay. A pair of these just come in this box if you went for the basic one is seven points and for the up the up gun the toe mm. two is nine points. 
That may seem cheap, but helicopters die really right, easily okay. because commonly, helicopters are incredibly good. Like you play in a game, the other guy puts down three T-80s mm -hmm. in some Soviet reserve division that he's paid four <laughs> points for, yeah, but yeah. they're still T-80s uh -huh. from the front, right? And you've got nothing in your arsenal that can deal with it. A pair of helicopters can shoot it in the rear with incredibly powerful anti-tank mm -hmm. weapons, but they need to survive a turn of being shot at. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes you're going to find a position where you can take a kind of nap of earth, position where you're in cover from most of the rest of the board. But generally speaking, you get through helicopters <laughs> quite quickly. Mm -hmm. But I think so much more so than planes in Flames of War, they do add a potential to your force for dealing with really hard, hard targets yeah. for relatively low cost, but it's not without risk. It can also fire its rocket launcher as a salvo, so it's cheap artillery, but it's got an anti-tank rating of four, which can probably deal with the top armor of most mm. non-MBTs, main battle tanks, mm -hmm. um, and its Gatling gun has also got the anti-helicopter mm. rule, so it can chase down other helicopters oh, as well as shooting at ground targets. Ah. But yeah, seven points for the tow one, it seems nine to do quite a lot for seven points or nine points. But they really do die but easy. But they really do die they get, easy. They just get shot out from everywhere. Yeah. And you don't have armor, obviously. You oh, just yeah. have a four-up save. You get yeah. hit, you've got 50... If you hit, 50-50 yeah. dead. That's the good thing and the bad thing. They've got oh, no, a five-up aircraft, aircraft save. They do have to fly. And that they have to they have fly to be around. Quite light. <laughs> and most... By the mid-90s... Most APCs have got um, like computer guided uh, mm. auto cannons mm -hmm. on them. All of them can shoot at this, yeah. basically. Quite successfully. Yeah, yeah, they can have a go. Uh, but as a kit, though, mm. it, it might look uh, more complicated than you think that when yeah. you need to be a little bit careful with the fins, they mm. are socketed. They are, yeah. but they will, they will, they may well droop. I don't think they're tight fits. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's up? Well, they might droop. But they might not droop. A tight fit. <laughs> the, yeah, in, <laughs> okay. Okay. You're really more into that. Um, and so too, I'm just thinking. Although I haven't built one of these, I built several of the other helicopters. The skids are often a little bit fiddly mm. because it's because the angle they come down on, mm. they often fit to the side in slight, uh, in slight, a slightly weird way. I can see. Yeah. There's some keying points on here. But it's it's the up and down making is. sure they dry yeah. uh -huh. at the right angle so that it sits flat. Mm. You, you know you what I mean. Droopy skids. <laughs> you don't want droopy skids, mate. That is a fact. <laughs> yeah. And there's a few there's a few other bits on here for the weapon pods and so forth. Yeah, it's which cool. is which is cool. Um, it may be that you make slightly different versions of this for different eras and for like these Israelis use this and some of the other. At least the forces. So you definitely want to look at the way it's telling you to build it, mm -hmm. which is with the mini gun in the front and the rocket pods on the side, yeah. and the missiles. Sorry, rocket pods in the middle and the um, missiles on the edge. But you'll you can see it in there. Mm. But if you're going to use it with this force, build it that way. Don't be tempted to mix and match. Mm. I mean, your models do what you want, yeah, but, yeah. Rules but rules. in terms of in terms of um, as intended, mm -hmm. that's that. Blades come in a separate pack. They do, yeah, I did see that. With magnets. With magnets. Magnets. Yeah. Um, magnetizing blades is a really good idea, because then storage is much less of a problem, because mm. these, are, these are going to snap. Yes. Downside with magnetizing them is when you magnetize the next one, and then the you one after make that, sure that yeah. make sure all your blades are in alignment, because <laughs> at some point you're going to have a box full of blades and a box full of helicopters, mm. And you want any to fit any, I promise you. Um, so that is the recommended aircraft flight stand. Okay, and there's a short the one. The higher well. one. And the short one the is short for the helicopters. One. It's not about, it's about how you use it, right? It is, it is all about how you use it. I tend to put uh, the helicopters on the bigger ones anyway. <laughs> More impressive. Does this go with this? Yes. Beautiful. Let's do that one. That's the exciting new, new, new thing in the box. So this is one of the many tanks that the Americans call the Patton. Mm. This is the M60, which I believe, although I'm not certain, is a 1960-ish design. Oh, okay. But that could be nonsense. It's got this really distinctive hull underneath. Mm. That That is the shape. Yeah, it is that's kind of weird. Kind of, kind of weird, bowed shape underneath. Mm. I don't know why that is. People out there will know. 
I've built a few of these because they came in the previous start set. So this is the M6. It is a very, very simple kit look. Lower hull, upper hull, tracks and running gear. You notice that they're not solid. Yeah, they've got holes all the so, way through them. No, it's because of this weird shaped hull. Oh, okay. To fit on oh. these gearing points, uh -huh. it mm. can't have a back to it. Gotcha. Because it wouldn't fit. Like chamfered on the inside. Yeah. yeah. But and if you're nervous about it though, they are still got strong keying points. This does just slot in. And um, you do need to pin these wheels into these holes. But when I, I built one of these a couple of years ago, mm. the, well, I built three of them. It worked just fine. Like everything like that, dry fit it before you put it together, uh, before you glue it, mm -hmm. and it'll be fine. So this That's, is the new bit. This is the new bit. Excellent. So can you see what's new here? It's got uh, the extra armor on it. It's got a plique E R A. Nice. It's got uh, explosive reactive armor. So M60 pattern is here. So this is the first tank that you get to look at. Ooh. Uh, so the M60 was in service for a long time, particularly with the Marines. Mm -hmm. I think well into the 90s, the Marines have still got them. Now, actually, in truth, on deployment, they often just borrowed some Abrams from the army. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's not universally the case. They're, and like the Israelis, they used the M60s for quite a long time. And one of the things that they get at some point is an ERA, which is an armor package. Um, and what the ERA effectively does to it, they've provided, I think, their Siocast. Mm, they seem to be. Um, and they're also, if you look to them, they're not identical. Are they not? No. So these are a lot of the modern tanks have got quite a lot of stowage bins on them, mm. and you'll find that they're in, they've got slightly oh, different yeah. arrangements. That's fun. And I really like that because they're like, if we're going to have to make these, so they've obviously decided like, how many M60 ERA upgrades are we going to sell? Can we make that in plastic? Probably not, because mm. it's only used maybe by a small period of time by the Marines. So they've made them in Cyocast or resin. Yeah. I think it's Cyocast. But they've taken the opportunity, saying, well, if we're going to hand sculpt them mm. and recast them, then let's just muck around a little bit with yeah. the... with the. There's three different types in this container. There might be more, yeah. I suppose. Between the five turrets. Yeah. And it's just a storage rearrangement. Uh -huh. right? Yeah, it's but, just storage on the back. But it just it just gives that little bit of flavour. I think. All right. Yeah. So, M60 Marine Division. Uh, that's the tank company, which you definitely can't make with only five <laughs> tanks. Let me find the unit card. There we go. M60 Pattern. So, it's got a three-up courage and a remount skill of three-up, which is good. Only four for morale, which is an assault skill of four. Okay. So it's it's, it's yeah, pretty vanilla. Pretty it's hit on fours. It comes as stock, 15 armor, the hell? eight in the side. Now, by flimsy, what standards does matter? Wrong game. <laughs> the wrong game. Yeah, absolutely. Number go big. And you'll see that it's 105 mil gun, uh -huh. this M68 105 gun. I think that that's the British 105 okay. that gets used throughout NATO for a period. Could be wrong. Has a 40 inch range. Yeah. Halt in route moving two and two shooting. Anti tank power 20. Firepower two up. Yeah. And has the accurate and stabilizer Jeez. rule. Accurate means it doesn't get a penalty for shooting number 16. Stabilizer means you can, you move can, and shoot. You can tactical move. A high, so the tactical number of 10, yeah. which is like the tactical move for every tank in a game mm. that isn't really slow. Because what he's saying is this is how fast you can really go before the crew are affected by mm. the speed. It allows you to make the tactical move of up to 14 because it's got a stabilizer, but taking a penalty to your hit oh, number. Fun. So That's you still, still get cool. the two shots. Yeah. And you can move up to 14. Huh. In a game where Four inches nearer might put you on competing, contesting an objective. Four inches nearer might move you within a within a range band. Mm -hmm. That can be really powerful to have that mm. choice. Definitely. Um, but yes, amazing. And you can take them in units of up to five. How many points were there on the back there, James? Uh, five was twenty points. Twenty points of four points each compared to the ERA is an extra point it's a model. Extra point per model. Yeah. These things never work like they give you slightly different points because as they hit different boundaries, mm -hmm. they may be like three point five or points or whatever, and it doesn't work. But basically, you pay an extra point for an extra point of armor. What do that's, you think? It's really interesting. Because just like in Flames of War, one of the great things about Team Yankee is they've done a really good job of matching the numbers. Mm. So if you're playing tanks of the right era, I guess this is a game where you can 
put Shermans up against. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can certainly get T-34 85s yeah. in the 90s in, oh, in Russian reserve formations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, still and that is going to have seven out. armor. Mm -hmm. um, but generally speaking, if you're fighting fight MBTs of major nations, the numbers are going to be around 30-40% chance of going through. Mm -hmm. Right? So an extra point of armor can be really quite clutch. Yeah. Now, I've, so I certainly find this with the Chieftain. So the Chieftain has the option for a still brew upgrade, which is a bulge armor package okay. near the front, uh, near the gun on the turret. It's like this is where shells normally hit. Stick some more armor <laughs> there. But that's got a much higher armor rating. Right. On 16 versus 15, I think that there are so many guns in the game that will go straight through either mm. that I'm not sure it pays off. If I know I'm playing in era, for definite, but because of the yeah. kind of big envelope against T80, M60 is not going to get safe. Yeah, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That you know what I mean? 23, but if you left. know you're coming up against T62s, mm. then that point is probably clutch because that probably reduces the number of penetrating hits by half. It's now relevant. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so it's it's super situational. And I actually think for a game like Team Yankee, but like Flames of War, I think it's important that you. You contextualize with your opponent mm. whereabouts and whatabouts you're gonna fight. The worst games you have with the terrible mismatch stuff, like when you played against the Panzer training company with the King yeah. Tigers. Yeah. It's just like I ain't got anything that can go through the I front of that. And I didn't bring the Sturmovics and mm -hmm. you know, and it wasn't a good game experience. No, no, it wasn't. Um, and, and I then think, we brought the Sturmovics. <laughs> and then bring the Sturmovics and, and you have a very different game. Yeah. yeah. Um we talked about the sprue, didn't we? We did. So that's the M60. I think it's a good tank at four points a tank. I'm not sure it's a good point of five points for tank, and I know that that seems really, <laughs> really clear. But I think what you're getting for that extra point... It's a 20% increase in cost. That's pretty big. Right. You know, 75 because I think as a tank, a little bit like things like T62 and early T72s, mm. is this will absolutely trash any non-tank. Mm. And can hold its own, has got a fighting chance against any pre-1990s <laughs> tank. Right, okay, yeah. But once you go past that, it's like all these helicopters will go straight through the front of it when we looked at those big, big numbers. Mm. Some of the infantry guided, guided anti-tank weapons yeah. are going to go to Milan, yeah. going to go straight through it. Um, so, so I think what you get for four points, you're basically getting that same for five points. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I like it as a tank because I think it's something that for four points really does the business. Mm. I really like the look of it. Five points nearly buys you two more helicopters. <laughs> Five points, points nearly buys you two more yeah. helicopters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But as I say, this is a game that's got T-80s got in mm. it, you know, uh, T-80Us at that. So M60 Pan, I think is a good workhorse vehicle. I think it's a good one because it'll demolish APCs, you know, those light anti-tank mm. vehicles, all that stuff. It'll trash all of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's paying the lower points for the and privilege. And it's paying the lower points for the privilege, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't think a heavier tank will do that job any better. Mm. Excellent. Shall we move on? Let's move on. Next vehicle. To the Hammers. The Hammers. As you've mentioned them. Mm. Fantastic. So, I uh, built a couple of these as well. The Hummer. Very simple. <laughs> the Hummer. This is a super simple kit. Mm. Um, it could have been a much more complicated thing where you built the side, you put the lid on and so forth. It's, but it's, it's a sort of lower hot box mm -hmm. chassis yeah. that you glue the top to. The wheels stick into the side. I think you might put the wheels on before the upper right. because part of it goes behind the frame actually. Yeah. Now. And then you put a windscreen on. And then you put a windscreen <laughs> on and you potentially put a cupola yeah. into this hatch position because there's another baggie of Siocast bits oh, yeah. over there. And there are for the different potential crewings of this vehicle. And because they are also a, a mold sprue, mm -hmm. you've actually got things. So they're just vehicle drivers. They're just some normal regular They're just tank drivers. drivers. That's, that's the crew that comes with like the M113 and that's so forth. That's your cup off. holders. Gotcha. Yeah, your cup holders. <laughs> those guys stick in there because you have the option to build various Hummers. Okay. Your options are... Pointing man. Pointing man. Ah. Man with a handbag, I think. Binoculars. <laughs> oh, right. Great. 
Man with a handbag. <laughs> okay, man with a handbag. Man leaning jauntily. Mm, yep. Yep. A couple of uh, blowpipe missile launches. Wonder which one you're going to choose. <laughs> Wonder which one you're going to choose. Those are your options. Those Another your man options. leaning jauntily. Yeah. But in, so you will di- you'll use different ones of those figures. And in, that, in fact, you haven't. I don't think we've got anybody using a blowpipe on here. Um, that's that comes with uh, the same thing yes. is used. We can stop talking about that one now. It's gone. <laughs> if I can't put the guy with the missile launcher in it, I'm not planning. You can't put the guy with the missile uh, launcher in it. No. <laughs> Absolutely. No. Um, so what you will be doing here is you will be making the tow version mm. because that is the only two vehicle card here. Okay. It's the only one that requires only two hummers. Right. You can take it with tow or with tow two. And I think the tow just mounts on the roof as a piece of plastic rather than using one of those guys. Let me look at the front. I think it, it's got a... Hey, uh, let's see. Dude. I can see a little dude. Oh, no, no, that, no you, can, you can slot a dude in, yeah. but the weapon is plastic. Oh, he's not some, sorry, right, He's right, not right. holding it, yeah? No, no, no. The weapon is on sprue. Yeah, definitely. And then the fellow's just... Have like... you got more than one of these boxes or you buy yourself a box of Hummers? Mm. You've got cons in here for taking Hummer scout teams, Hummer machine gun teams, a Hummer. One of the more interesting ones if you weren't using them as an anti-tank team, is the Hummer is your OP, Ooh, which you've got uh, artillery yeah. here, mm. so you might want to. But I think you probably need the anti-tank, because again, this is about what do I do about the T-80s mm-hmm. or something of that nature, is tow 2, which is the latest generation missile, 5 power 23. Unheard of numbers. Obscenely large of. numbers, but you've not seen front armor of more than twenty yet, have you, James? I sure, have not. You have I not. I think I've seen more than um, fourteen. <laughs> so what you, what you do with these is you stick them in a you stick them in a defensible position because they're missiles. You can't drive them up and yeah. just and shoot or whatever. This is more of an ambush vehicle. Uh-huh. But for a pair of those, it's two points for the tow and three points two for points. the tow too. And that two might of these two points. Two of these. Shroom, 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 going shroom, 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 shroom. Priceless. Not all game, because if anything can shoot them, it will. But you can put no. them somewhere it's difficult. You know, they're in, they're in, cons- they're in cover, they're at me. long range. Yeah. <laughs> it won't stop you. Uh, I'll point them off the table and still go, shoot, shoot, shoot. Making the noise. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Right, right so what do we have left? We've got uh, whatever this is, a LAV 25. The LAV. So the LAV, and I think the LAV is like the Marine equivalent or, or the same kind of thinking as the Striker. Okay. In the American Army. It looks nothing like a toilet to me. And it's nothing like a toilet. There's yeah. nothing like a lavatory. Like a lav. To me. A lav. What is no. that about? So this this is a um, um, a multi-purpose hull. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to make a basic eight-wheel, decent cross-country performance mm-hmm. military vehicle that we can set all kinds of different weapon packages on. Nice. Things that up until that point they'd been sticking on the top of M113s mm. or on Bradleys. Like, well, let's make a a, a high speed with good off-road performance wheel version of that. I believe, which is why you can have a whole lav company and you've got four different lav units you could potentially build because this was a, this is the multi-role vehicle. It's one of them just a big old mortar on the roof. Where's this mortar go? Oh, fun, okay. There's a big mortar. Yes, so the versions are (laughs) the the mortar, Uh, the mortar's internal. It's not mounted on the roof. You open a roof hatch and fire the mortar out. Don't rather make that stupid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, which you can make with this set because that only requires yeah. two uh, as a mortar. It's an eighty-one millimeter mortar though, with an anti-tank power of one and four at firepower. One. Yeah, because it's an eighty mil mortar. Yeah. With, but it's got a fifty-six inch range because it's a modern mortar. It goes a lot further than those baby ones. And smoke. Uh, it's got smoke bombardment. And it's only two points. Smoke bombardment is potentially really powerful, actually. Mm. Yeah. It's got smoke. Yeah, that's Quite interesting. Fun. Sorry, it's also amphibious is the lab. So that's your mortar option. Cool. Which... Front armor one, side armor one, top armor none. Yes. On all of them. But I think like the, like the striker, they, they keep... Whenever we have an extended period of peace, mm. military analysts start singing, the tank is dead, man. It's done. <laughs> we don't need uh-huh. them. They're yeah. really expensive. Ridiculous. They're so vulnerable to 
whatever the latest missile <laughs> is. We don't need it. And then when somebody has wars, like, do you know, we really, really need tanks. <laughs> so we're low on around here. We just, just, just tanks. Yeah, what we really need to get moving in this war, get something done, is we need some tanks. I said, yeah, but the tanks are really vulnerable. I said, not as vulnerable as a dude on his own <laughs> trying to do the same thing. Uh -huh. There's just something that tanks bring to the pack to the yeah. party. Um, I'm not saying that's definitely the case uh, with that. I think that was the thing with the striker. I don't know much whether the lab is just intended to be a multi-role vehicle, mm. but it's also amphibious, um, which is your marine thing. I think this thing is supposed to be able to wave. So that was the motor option, which I think is well worth doing. In here, it's actually recommending that you build the lab 25 which is the recon gun version. So also is that, are there points. four labs? There are four in the, in the box, yeah. So you could take both of these. You could mm. have a two and a two. Yeah. Um, or, or a four. So the basic lab, uh, so if you took, these are a point each, how much was the mortar? Point each. But the, mo ah, the mortar, you, you can have only four. have a pair. Right, okay. You can't have a four. And that means you're always, the problem with the two gun barrage is anything that you hit, you have to re-roll again right. and you might miss because yeah. it's a very low saturation barrage. All right. Um, so this is a scout unit. So you could take a pair of these for two or four of them for four points. It's got a 25 mil Gatling gun, which has got the anti-helicopter rule. Nice. Very useful against Soviets because they have some powerful helicopters. It's not uncommon for people to be play with six of those hinds. Because if you bring less, you might lose all of them in first turn. That's you know what I mean? You've got to, you've got to saturate yeah. the air defense. Yeah. Um, so it's got the anti-helicopter rule, which is great. It can dedicate fire. 24-inch uh, range, 3 and 3 with an anti-tank power of 8. Yeah. So it's gonna, it's good for dealing with, um, and a 5 at fire power, it can, it can make an effort on infantry mm -hmm. that are in bulletproof cover, because it's got a 5 at fire power on a 6. It can shoot at helicopters. It chucks out a decent number of dice yeah. around 5 5 power, and it's not bad at shooting other light vehicles. Yeah, it, it's good but against itself. <laughs> it's very good against things like it, yeah. <laughs> which have got one front armour. Uh -huh. I don't know whether this is entirely aluminium or whether it's just very little steel, uh -huh. but this is just not armour. It does have to float. <laughs> It has to it's flow. An issue. That definitely <laughs> limits you. It's got the scout and it's also got the spearhead roll. What is the spearhead roll? The spearhead roll allows you to make a pre game move, which increases the size of your deployment area. Ah. That is, if you've got. That's big. If you use it before, that, no, and that is cool. huge that you can push your way into the board in your deployment. Very cool. Yeah, and given that the other car can do that, you're also screening off bits mm. by doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really powerful rule. As a kit, sorry, it's oh, yeah. a bit unusual because of its shape and the fact that you might have to put things like the motor in the internal space, mm. I think. Mm. Um, Before you glue the roof on. Yeah, and it looks like you're gluing the wheels in pairs, or is that a strip of all eight? It's a strip of four, four on each side. Right, right, yeah. So it's two strips, very similar to stuff. So that, previously. yeah, that could be a lot worse, yeah. couldn't it? Those could be individual wheels. They're just kind of plugging in one go. I've definitely seen similar kits to this before, where because it's got the chamfer front and all the way around the outsides, where you just kind of have to be very careful about gluing top to bottom. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, it, the keying's good. Yeah, and but it's, the got, forward, it's got. It's got the Key forward backward connect. You, I, I can see you being able to like slide the top all the oh, way off the, the, front. the top. So, yeah, just be careful. Just be careful. Yeah, That's just fine. be a little bit careful with that. Excellent. All right. So, so all, all we have scale. left, sir. All we have left is the, the, is M109. the M109. We have. That's a big old gun. That is a big old gun. I think that I think they're still widely in service, isn't there? I mean, I think most people are using a the the German version of that now. Right. Whatever that's called. But the M109 self-propelled howitzer. It's got two front armor, mate. Wow. Two side armor and one top armor. I feel like they've intentionally put the 50 cal right next to this giant gun. Next to the Just gun. Like, this is a big gun. This is a very, very big this gun. This is a very <laughs> big gun. Yes. And yes. there's a stubby version of it as well for those who prefer that. Yeah, I don't know whether there's three guns. Um, yeah, there's, oh, yeah, there's three guns. Because this is a gun that has iteration. I think for this period, look at this picture, you want to be using the biggest the one. The very largest. Very largest, yep. Uh, so the uh, M185 155mm howitzer, 96 inch range. That's all of it. <laughs> That's all the range. Four up anti-tank power. So remember this is a top attack mm -hmm. as a bombardment. Mm -hmm. Most things, I wonder what the M60 had actually. Did it have, did it have two or more? It had two top two. armor. Okay. Yeah, so you can just bail those tanks, you can take them out, it's got the smoke bombardment. But it's direct fire. Direct <laughs> fire. 
has got 15 anti-tank power and a 36 inch range. Okay, it, it's good adaptability though. Yeah. Direct fire of 15 and still having the artillery side of things is pretty mental. Yes. Now the problem with direct firing anything like this is oh. that means you're going to be fired out and you're quite an expensive right. and vulnerable unit. It's brutal as well though. That's good. Yeah, brutal. Okay, it's, that. This is 155 mil mm. gun. Uh, it's got the slow firing, but it's got a tactical move of 10. In that mid to late game, you may find yourself in a circumstance mm -hmm. where you can drive your battery of howitzers up onto the crest of the hill, yep. take some pot shots at the side of tanks or front of armoured vehicles I mean, yeah. that make a difference. It's halted one and moving one. It's, you don't actually yes. lose any effect. Of well, it's got the that. slow firing, which means it probably shoots harder uh, if so it moves. Plus one if moving. Okay, if right. Moving. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, but you can do it, and with a 15, it will destroy APCs, armoured fighting vehicles. It just won't deal with, with modern mm. tanks. Yeah, three for seven points as well. Three for seven Very points. Very reasonable. You yep. can arm it with bomblets. Yes. <laughs> so you get smart munitions. Okay. A bomblet. Bomblets. You sure that's not a dessert? No, no, no. no. That, is a, <laughs> that is an artillery shell that subdivides. Oh, like it's that sub munitions. Okay, right, okay, cool. All right. Or minelets. That's how you lay a minefield with artillery. Excellent. Again, it's sub munitions, but they're mines, not bombs. Okay, they're just very cute. I don't know. Yeah. Laser guided projectiles for a point as well. All of those cost a point. And laser guided projectiles, so they allow you to fire at the top of tanks. Uh, may fire laser guided projectiles instead of bombardments. Use observers' team line of sight. Minimum rage 16. Anti tank 21. Firepower 2 plus. Brutal guided heat. It's a heat missile. Anti-tank power 21. That's a bit of a jump. That is... <laughs> for a point. <laughs> for a point. Is that one point for the unit or one point for the... I'm um, all for one point each. Are you taking that every time? So you take... Three of them are now ten points. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's each vehicle Sorry, yeah. that's spare point. For one point each. For one point each. Because each one can make that shot. Mm. Yeah, but you, th there's very few weapon systems in here that have got that higher anti-tank mm. rating, and it certainly doesn't have that high without no, it that. That's you do good. need you do need the observer for it, and you don't want them to be observed. Mm. And you could take six of them. Well, we're looking at the three-point <laughs> unit, six three in the box. Yeah. Um, 14 points for six, yeah. 14 points. I mean, so compared to sort of World War II or the First World War, artillery just doesn't stop being the critical battlefield. We talked about tanks, and they're, and they're, they're clearly very important. We've seen mm -hmm. that through so many conflicts. Like, whenever there's peace, people talk about tanks being over. Whenever there's a war, people say, go back into, like, <laughs> we need to develop a new tank. New tank, please. <laughs> new tank, please. Old tanks would be great. <laughs> Just get fun. me more tanks. <laughs> we need tanks, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in this particular conflict, Desert Storm, it's like, the tanks were what it was all about. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, the fact Standing that it was a fully mechanised... Yeah. Fully mobile force mm -hmm. with a lot of combat power. Three of those but bad boys. Artillery is what I was coming to. Artillery has never lost its place mm. and just keeps getting better. Mm -hmm. If you really got to sort of we, you know, dig somebody out of a hole with a yeah. spoon that's just squirreled their way in uh -huh. there like a tick, you need artillery all the way to this day. All the just, way to just because it's a drone artillery these days doesn't mean yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, just artillery. Yeah. And, or, or drone spotting or yeah. whatever else. Um, artillery never stops being just. I think Fantastic. the one on nines are really good. One of the really sad parts about Team Yankee is uh, the game is attempting to be credible and realistic. And what <laughs> that means is rocket artillery isn't actually as good as proper artillery. Oh, okay. Rocket artillery puts a lot of saturation down. But it doesn't knock out hard targets. Gotcha. Okay. You get a lot of bang. Yeah. But an artillery with a laser guided shell can actually drop around onto the roof of a tank. <laughs> so you're telling Is me that this? laser guided missiles are good? Laser guided <laughs> shells. shells even They're not better. missiles. Yeah. They're shells. Laser guided Amazing. shells. Yeah. Very fun. Absolutely. And a like, cool model. It's a good kit. This, oh, is, this sorry, is absolutely yes. typical. Stick the bottom on and then stick the, ta the tracks on and the side. the tracks on the side. Two pieces. Yes. Um, pick the right gun. There are different generations of this vehicle. It's the big one. It's the ri even if it isn't the big one. Just put the big pick one. Pick the big put one the big on. One. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, unless you're planning to use this kit, because there is. But the labs are still quite new and the Hummers are quite new. This is a Desert Storm force. Mm. Look, for the money that you pay. Which is on screen right now. <laughs> um, I think this is very good. Okay. I think I generally feel like the money that they're charging these days, I want, when there's only 15 vehicles in or 15 units, 
I'm, I feel a bit cheated. Mm. The nearer it is to 20, the better value it is. Now, did you, how many vehicles did you say there were? There's five, four. seven, ten, four, sixteen. Sixteen vehicles and four, <laughs> four sprues of rifle, of, yeah. of infantry and four sprues of marines. There's actually 24 mm -hmm. sprues mm. in here and these tokens um, and the Oops. full the yep. full unit deck. So I think this is really good value. I do think if you want to play this army, this only comes out of 75 points. And I don't think you could make it more by building mm. it differently. I actually think you'd be inclined to make it like taking the M60s without the ERA. Right. Uh, you definitely want four helicopters at least if you're taking helicopters. <laughs> uh, you probably want six artillery. You probably want ten M60s. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't get anything for, for, for making these kind of comments, mm -hmm. unless you buy them from me, of course. But um, I think you probably want two of these. Yeah. I don't think there's yeah. much in there that you don't want. I don't think most you don't of it. Want you twice. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, at, at which point your army's pretty much done. Mm. And, and if you don't do that, you're going to end up spending more. You get a box of Hummers and a box of Apaches and a box of Patterns, M60. It'd be more than the cost, It'd of, be more than the cost of this box. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's a fact. Mm -hmm. I think the platoon boxes are 35 quid now. And I think this is about 90. Um, so if you, want, if you want to go down this route, it's well worth it to Great expand the existing American forces, diversify, get yourself some Marines. And if you want to go for Desert Storm era US Marines, I reckon you probably want two. Mm -hmm. All right. I hope that was useful, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.